Pyongyang will have the capacity to launch an intercontinental ballistic missile with a nuclear warhead on it by 2020. The Hillary camp is saying all the normal stuff. We should strengthen and add to sanctions and get China more involved in policing the region. Trump's campaign manager, Kellyanne, is saying we should just get Trump and Pence into the White House so that North Korea knows we aren't messing around. In other news, my, bud Danny, or my buddy Dan Fox has acquired a cable take pole, which for all intents and purposes is a selfie stick. And I knew he was asking around for one, and I had even offered to let him borrow uh, one of my backup sticks, but I guess it just didn't register that he was going to use the technology uh, for his countdown to VRD. It has been said that America is safer and more fearful than at any time since 9-11. And I have no way of knowing whether that's actually true or not, but I do know that I see fear on my news feeds all the time and in the world at large. I've seen it, you know, for the past 15 years. I also know that fear has a tendency to make us ugly. <coughs> on the inside and outside. <coughs> so today, let's just try to be less ugly. I mean, some people can't help it, but if you can, just try. I went to a Johnson Weld rally on Saturday. And Johnson started off his speech with an apology for the Aleppo gaffe. This whole Aleppo gaffe. <laughs> Hillary Clinton has tried and failed to apologize for trying to spice up one of her speeches with some, uh, some free verse. You could put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. Personally, I would like to apologize to my buddy Dan. Alex was throwing me a little shade. He seems to think I was throwing shade in a post that I made two days ago, and maybe I was. I, I certainly wasn't um, as supportive as I could have been, and I included footage of a mushroom cloud, which could have been seen as passive aggressive. So here's an apology that is far more genuine than anything a politician could do. Damn, sorry. My dad, who, fun fact, is a political science professor, uh, sent me some reading on post-truth politics. He's kind of an old-fashioned guy who values honesty, so he is not very happy with this election cycle. The essay had to do with politics becoming more and more about feelings and less and less about facts, which seems to be the case. Um, Hillary is a human secret who hides behind SAT words, and Trump, while he lies less secretively, says things like inner-city crime is reaching record levels, which is not correct factually but it does help him get out the fear votes so i understand why he's saying it i think it's so easy to spread misinformation these days because a the internet b so many incredible americans are working so hard to provide for their incredible american families that they don't really have time to read widely or uh, learn to think for themselves and c uh, boredom misinformation is juicier than uh, reality reality can be uh, dense for those of you who don't know anything but want to learn some stuff before November, I highly recommend that you subscribe to The Daily Skim. It's an email newsletter that manages to keep things cutesy. The hyperlinks in the email are in teal, so it makes the nightmares that make up the news seem friendlier. It's one of my favorite colors. Also, I met up with Dan today to discuss his new hashtag campaign, which is called 537 Registration Challenge. I need my phone. It's filming. Thank you. Oh. Got. He was filming, but he needed it. Here he comes. The campaign sounds about as impossible as it does noble, but I, I don't know. Dan has my full support and confidence. I assure you, you have over 537 friends. So I took 537 well, friends. Facebook friends, yes. Facebook friends, uh, and I nominated them to uh, nominate 537 other people to register and vote. And the challenge is. One second. So please go check that out at Dan Max Fox. Colin Powell's leaked emails had a lot of interesting Hillary fluff. Uh, he called the Benghazi scandal a stupid witch hunt, and he said that Bill Clinton was still, and I quote, dicking bimbos at home. 
The stuff he said about Trump was nothing new, just that DJT is a national disgrace. Anyway, after a year and a half of hearing about emails in the news, I have finally decided to clean out my own inbox. I sifted through it the other day just for fun, looking for compromising material. The only thing I could find that was even remotely close to dirt was a photo that somebody sent me uh, of an app I took in college. I decided to release the photo in this video to take ammunition away from any hacktivist who may want to target me in the future for whatever reason. I don't know, the photo is more artsy than anything and doesn't really undermine my work or the image that I'm trying to project. This countdown was supposed to be something I could do that would help me figure out how I could learn how to be excited about voting. Something that anarchist Emma Goldman would say is an illusion of participation. But we're 15 days in and I haven't felt anything except unclean. And my eyes hurt from staring at my phone all day monitoring my likes, which are less than stellar right now. David Foster Wallace says that there's no such thing as not voting. We either vote by voting or we vote by staying at home and tacitly doubling the value of some diehard's vote. So if we're to believe David, then voting isn't a freedom, since there's no choice in the matter. I'm sorry, I'm being such a downer. I, uh, I picked up Cornell West's book, Democracy Matters, so hopefully that helps. And I can figure out civic duty before the 27th. My mom, bless her heart, has been peddling some editorials on her Facebook wall that are less than favorable toward Trump. One of her posts elicited a reply from David, who writes, I was taught as a youngster, if you can't say anything good, say nothing at all. David is a guy who shared somebody else's post that asks ready for Hillary to debate Trump with ill in Hillary capitalized. And I get it. Anyway, David's name rang a bell, so I took to Google and it turns out that the most optimized person uh, bearing his name was a British-born communist spy. I replied to his comment with my findings and he replied, cute, no relation, but I'm definitely more handsome and currently smell better than his rotting corpse, lol. <laughs> David is a good sport, but I wouldn't call his jokes good. So if he continues to operate on lessons that he was taught as a youngster, I'm not sure why he's saying anything at all. His comment did get two likes though, so who knows, maybe he is a good comedian and I just don't see it. Donald Trump was quick to respond. Politicians love making campaign promises about generating new jobs because a lot of American voters eat it up. Trump says he'll create 25 million new jobs uh, over the next decade, and I'm not sure if that's supposed to impress me because I haven't really tried to understanding the numbers in context. Also, nothing he says really shocks or excites me anymore because it's just words. It's just numbers and words. Clinton, who has failed to shock or excite me even once during this campaign, has said that she will make uh, the biggest investment in new good paying jobs since World War II. Big deal. You know, history is being made every day at this point. The people who take campaign promises seriously are probably the same geeks who get excited about jobs. My own experience with jobs is that they just take up time that I could be using to make and upload videos to YouTube.